Logan. Turn them on. Thanks for joining us at ledlightexpert.com. Today we're gonna to be going over high bay lighting. Um, quick point, high bay lighting, also typically called warehouse lights. Uh, they're really common in gyms, sports complexes, warehouses, auto garages, manufacturing, um, auditoriums, um, a lot of different places that high bay lights are used. Uh, the distinction for high bay lighting um, comes for any light that's over 14 feet high. Anything under that is typically considered low bay lighting. A um, couple of the big differences that you're going to want to see here uh, is that with the, the newer LED technology, uh, the lights have gotten a lot smaller. Um, you've got smaller lights, you've got lighter lights, you've got lumen outputs of over 140 lumens per watt, so you're getting really efficient lighting saving a lot of money there, plus your long-term savings from low maintenance, not having to replace bulbs, anything like that that you'd be normally used to. Another thing to notice is that there is no reflectors on these high bay lights. So you don't have those big bulky reflectors, um, which also lose some of the lumens um, getting to the ground as they're going through the reflectors. Um, now, some of the options when it comes to high bay lighting, um, we've got our uh, most common, the UFO lights see on these pretty obvious why they're called UFO lights they look like UFOs um, another light would be the linear lights uh, this one right here is designed more for being used in aisles um, but there is uh, linear lights that are much closer to what everybody's used to with those standard T5 and T8 fixtures um, sometimes floodlights will be used in warehouses um, you've got a few different options depending on the, the location. Sometimes somebody might use some wall lights. So there's, there's a few different options that would be used in warehouses, but traditionally, as far as high bay goes, we're talking about UFO lights uh, and linear lighting. Um, one of the things you want to make sure you're doing um, is if you're, say, retrofitting your high bay lighting, where you're using your existing fixtures, still using those reflectors, you might try using a corn bulb in place. So you can use your existing um, fixtures, but you always wanna make sure you remove the ballasts. Um, so there's a lot of basics as far as high bay lighting goes. Uh, we will have some more information for you uh, moving forward here regarding different aspects of high bay lighting. All right, now we wanna go over some of the options when it comes to high bay lighting. Uh, first thing we're gonna go over is colors. Um, so one of the most standard colors when it comes to high bay lighting is a 5,000 Kelvin. So that's a 5,000 K. Uh, it's a bright white light, um, also considered just like daylight. Uh, other options that are re readily available are a 4,000 K and a 3,000 K. Um, so whenever you're ready to order and we figure out what kind of lighting you wanna go with, uh, we'll get you taken care of on any of those colors. One thing we do want to mention is that lights over 5,000 K, there's a, a 5,700 and a 6,500 K lights. Those have been recommended against by the American Medical Association. So we also recommend that you don't go with those color temperatures. Um, moving on, there's a lot of mounting options when it comes to high bay lighting. Um, I've got an example here on the back of this one. We've got an eye bolt screws right into the back. You can use that for mounting with a chain or cable. Um, there's also uh, gripper wires, which pretty standard uh, with your linear lights. Everybody's pretty used to using those when it comes to mounting. Um, lastly, there's flood, flood brackets, which you can use on just about anything. Um, so there's a lot of options when it comes to the mount styles and whatever you need for your application. Um, another really good things when it comes to the LEDs is the dimmability. Um, so most of the high bay lights, you're going to have an option to dim those lights. Um, dimming is going to help in a lot of aspects. Say you're going with a light that's a lot brighter than you really want most of the time, you can use a dimmer to bring it down. Uh, you can also use that dimming to save some money and not go that full um, 300 watt, uh, 240 watt, 150, uh, whatever you're going with um, on any sort of lighting, um, you can use the dimmer to cut down on the power usage. Um, those dimmers also work in tandem a lot of times with motion sensors. Uh, you can see on this light here, there's a motion sensor. Uh, 
centered right in the middle of this um, high bay lighting. If you're in a warehouse where you know you want the light dim aside from when people are underneath it and actually in the area to use it, um, with that motion sensor it'll kick on. Uh, you can also use it for security purposes where it kicks on from darkness as if somebody's moving around. So there's a lot of options with motion sensors uh, and dimming. Uh, you can also have dimming settings where after a short time, the light goes to a dimmer setting, then after time after that, um, the light's gonna go completely off. So a lot of options when it comes to dimming and motion sensors. Um, one of the last things we wanted to go over now was the lenses. Now, typically uh, your high bay lighting, when we're talking about UFO lights, you're looking about 120 degree angle on these, but there is other options with them. Um, you can bring the angles down to 90 or 60 degrees, depending on the use. Um, 120 degrees is gonna be pretty common for anything under 25 feet. Uh, once you start getting over that, you may start moving into a different angle. Um, so getting different angles on the lights is possible. Um, big thing there again is you've got all this light pointed where you want it, so you don't have to use a reflector and waste light going through the reflector. Another quick tidbit we wanted to go over with beam angles on these, um, just to explain a little bit deeper. Um, so 120 degree angle, uh, if we think of this light, straight out's gonna be 180. Um, so 120, you're gonna be pivoting down. I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see it, but you can see that this light does not specifically point out, you're not seeing it bright out here. Um, that's 120 right there, um, a 90 degree, you know, you're looking as they're swishing down there. Um, to different angles depending on the use. Like we said previously, 120 would be your standard under 25 feet. Uh, once you start going higher than that, you'd move into a 90 and a 60 depending on the height the light's going at. Um, those angles can change with different lenses. Um, there's also different lenses. This one right here uh, is a glass lens. Um, there is polycarbonate lenses. Um, so you've got something that's uh, a little bit more resistant to some, uh, some anything hitting it, basically. Um, last thing I wanted to point out was there is NSF lights. Um, so if you're in any food business uh, where you need something that's safe for food, uh, NSF lights are definitely options. So if you have any questions, you're trying to figure out the right angles, right spacing for those, always feel free to give us a call. We have experts on staff to help you through it. All right, now we wanted to go over the, the backs of these UFO lights, just so you have a little bit more understanding on what's going on behind these. Um, this example right here, you can see that um, this casing up on the top is the driver for these lights. Uh, mount separately also has a, uh, some spacing in there that you can see that helps with the heat dissipation. Um, these make this very serviceable. It's real easy to pop the bolts out take this driver off if you ever need to replace it for some reason. Um, one of the reasons why these LED lights can last for 20 years plus um, because they're easily serviceable. Um, just as an example, uh, we went over it earlier, but I wanted to show you, got the, the eye bolt on this for mounting with the chain. Uh, you might be able to see the, the mounts here where you would attach a flood bracket if that's the way you're going to mount. Um, as far as the wiring goes, pretty simple with these lights. We've got our standard uh, hot, neutral, and ground coming out that you're gonna hook up. Um, this light's a good example of one with a dimmer. Uh, we've got the two dimmer wires coming out here. Um, when it comes to dimmers, uh, we do have a lot of information regarding how to set up the dimmers. Uh, check out our learning center. Uh, we have a video there and some information for you if you need a little bit of help going over setting up the dimmers on your lights. Um, this one here, you can see, uh, we've just got our main power out. We have this hooked up right now with some quick clips here. Uh, makes things a lot easier around the office, um, but you do wanna make sure everything's going into a box and up to code. Um, one of the things we also wanted to point out was um, these are standard lights going in a more common voltages. Uh, anything up to 277 from your 110 to 277, uh, we've got lights here. We do also have options for your 347 up to 480 volt. So whatever you're looking for, give us a ring and we'll be happy to help you out. All right, now we wanted to go over a little bit regarding a lighting plan for your warehouse or whatever you're using the high bay lights for. 
Um, so one of the most common lights we see in warehouses, uh, gyms, anything like that is a 400 watt metal halide or HPS bulb. Um, standard LED replacement on that's going to be your 150 watt. Um, one thing you want to keep in mind, those metal halides you're going to see on the box probably pushing 30,000 lumens, maybe more. Um, but those lights do degrade really fast compared to an LED. Um, so your 150 is going to be a little ways down the line of that metal halide after it's begun to degrade. Um, down near the end of the life of that um, 400 watt metal halide, uh, you're looking more about a 100 watt. Um, so there's a few options on that end if you're trying to keep about the same lighting or what the light is almost the average of its life. Uh, if you're trying to go brighter or get that light to match up to those metal halides when they're brand new, um, we've got a 240 watt here. Um, so you're, you're looking at something a little brighter depending on what you're doing. Um, now, you got to remember when it comes to the lighting plans on heights and your spacing, one thing you want to keep in mind is crossover lighting. Uh, you don't want lights all one big light shining on everything. You're going to have shadows. Um, nobody really wants those shadows, especially in a workplace. Um, another thing you want to keep in mind is as you go up in height, you do want to go with brighter lights, but you can cut down on the number of lights. As you come down in the height, uh, you would go with lights that aren't quite so bright, but you're going to need more of them. Um, so keep those things in mind when you're setting up your high bay lighting. Um, we do have people on staff to help you out with this. This can get really complicated depending on what you're doing. If it's a straight one for one swap, it might be a little simpler for you, but if you're going in with new lights and trying to figure out how to set up the lights, you wanna go all brand new, um, please give us a ring. We'll be happy to help you out. Uh, we can move into photometric studies if need be, um, but our experts will help you with whatever you need.